With time being so short before the end of the year and the looming fiscal cliff, the prospects of a budget deal by January 1st are growing increasingly slim. Joining us live, Virginia Senator Mark Warner is with us. Senator, it's good to have you this morning. My goodness, what's happening? Well, you know, I, I don't think we should be totally surprised. Um, the Speaker has tried to do a Republican-only deal in the House. That's not going to happen. Um, there are some on the Democratic side who say, okay, if we get revenues uh, that the president has requested, that would be enough. That's not going to be enough. We're going to have to deal with additional spending cuts and entitlement reform. And I hope what uh, this latest setback would show is, you know, it, it's not going to be the the extremes of either party that should be able to dictate this deal. Uh, the president and speaker are going to have to do something where both sides, both the president's going to probably lose some Democratic votes and the speaker's clearly going to lose some Republican votes. But there are a whole lot of us uh, in both parties who realize we've got to raise revenues, we've got to cut spending, we've got to start informing, uh, reforming our entitlement programs. And my fear now is I, I still am hopeful that we'll get a deal, but it may be a small one, which will still leave the bulk of the work until next year. Remember, if we don't get at least $4 trillion in deficit reduction over the next 10 years, then we've really not got the problem solved. We've really not drove the debt-to-GDP ratio back in the right direction. Right, and if you say we're just putting it off, is that not dealing with the debt ceiling, and we'll have to take that up in a few uh, months? I mean, I, 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 on the debt ceiling, this debt ceiling roulette that is now being played. You know, I was, I'm a firm supporter of the president. Maybe the only good thing that would have, Governor Romney would have won. Yeah, I'm sure he would have had the same position. You cannot allow the United States of America every 12, 15, 18 months to be held hostage uh, to either party or either House of Congress uh, with the um, full faith and credit of the United States being held hostage with the debt ceiling. I think the debt ceiling votes, uh, we ought to find a way around them. They, they ought to be extended. And we ought to have these battles through the normal process, but without the jeopardy of uh, uh, putting the faith and full faith and credit of the United States at risk. Now, you've built a business. You've been successful. You know what it's like to realize the American dream. And you know you've got to keep the customer first in order to accomplish that as a businessman. As Amen. a politician, don't you know how angry American voters are going to be if we go in the toilet economically because Congress couldn't do something? You know, not just how angry you're going to be, how angry I'm going to be and a whole slew of other folks up here, many of us who, you know, whether we were in the gang of six or these other efforts that laid out maybe not perfect plans, but more than a $4 trillion balanced approach. What we've all do done is stood down, allow the president, allow the speaker space to negotiate. I do think the president, by laying out the specifics of his plan uh, earlier in the week that had meaningful entitlement reform, that had some additional cuts, that had revenue, frankly, again, I even thought that was a bit small. But that got us, you know, 85 percent of the way there. Unfortunately, what we came back to in the House was the fact that I think the speaker has negotiated in good faith, but he cannot do a deal that's going to be, in effect, Republicans only. He's going to have to be willing to lose a lot of his Republican House members, some of these who've taken the Grover Norquist no, pla no, no revenue pledge at any cost, which is craziness, uh, and – pick up Democrats. On the other side, the Democrats are going to have to lose some of the people who say we can't touch a penny around Medicare or Social Security uh, because they uh, deny the math around the entitlement programs. These are great programs, but the math around them just doesn't work because we're living a lot longer. We want to ask you another quick question. That is a big issue, but we want to touch on gun control. You have an A rating from the NRA, but you've also said that you want to see measures to uh, bring guns under tighter control. Do you think that that's going to be successful? And do you think that you run the risk of overreacting uh, as Congress, not personally, but uh, Congress could overreact and alienate some of your supporters? Listen, I hope the NRA, when it comes out with its statements today, says that it wants to be part of the discussion. You know, I believe strongly in Second Amendment rights. I own firearms myself. I think there's lawful and appropriate ways to own firearms. But I also have got three daughters when this horrible tragedy said, and uh, and they said, Dad, you work up there. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't have a specific plan. I don't have a piece of legislation. But I sure as heck know there has to be some part of a solution here. Um, particularly looking perhaps at the, the, these magazines uh, uh, 
that can not eliminate, but even uh, if we can curtail or cut back on one more of these senseless acts of violence, then we've made some progress. Senator Warner, thanks so much uh, for being with us this morning. Good luck with all of this. I think you got your plate full as we head into the holidays here. Amen. Thank you, guys.